All right. Good morning. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, PT on Ice. Uh, this morning is Monday, uh, what are we at, the 19th, I think. Yeah, yeah, Monday. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Hope we're, uh, we're, we're settling in. Uh, on a bit early this morning, not sure if everyone's going to be able to join me. Uh, I got a meeting uh, that, that's going to unfortunately conflict with my typical 8.30 time, so I wanted to get on and make sure that we got things rolling and, uh, and got things moving. So I'm going to start with uh, the clock. I'm going to be in and out the door 15 minutes or less uh, in, in hopes that we can keep people moving on their day and, uh, and that all is going to go well. So away we go. So first things first, um, today is really about the recap. Uh, I wanted to take a little bit of time just to to kind of get everybody sort of back up to speed and and uh, and see where uh, where things are at, um, and just kind of recap the overall uh, uh, message on the Monday with Pop. So first thing you got to do, you know, again for a while there, there was a really important factor here on PT on Ice, and that was the first sip of coffee. So there, now it's official. Uh, I put that up there because I wanted to, to use that as an example. So this purple mug actually was given to me. Um, a couple of days ago, and it was a big deal. Uh, it, it's uh, it's for a women's group that I was able to get in and, and do some some work with, and really help spread the message on population health. And uh, they call themselves Swag, supporting women's advancement and growth. And it's something so so something that um, you know uh, I, I wanted to make a little bit of a point of because I think it's important for us to remember that. Um, this message is something that resonates across all domains, right? So, so it's definitely odd for a, a guy to walk into a women's group and talk about health, but they definitely saw the idea, the connection between um, what we talk about and what, what we do and what they're attempting to do, which is really about advancement and growth. And I think that that kind of like sets the stage for everything that, that the recap is about. And so the recap, um, a couple of things, right? First and foremost, um, we got to know that, uh, that 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 the idea here is for all of us to to get sort of back to our roots and maybe even you know back to the future. That idea, uh, which is overall health facing practice, which is to find problems, um, reverse those problems, and then go on to the next problem with the goal that all boats will rise, that, that people's quality of life will improve, and that overall society will be better. And so that's kind of like the, the overall population health driver. That's what, what we all sort of in this space want to see happen. Um, in a sense, we're sort of like the, the true on, uh, you know, foot soldiers of health, trying to find ways to, to, to get the entire war won by slowly and steadily just kind of uh, walking forward. And so the, the idea here um, of, of raising health overall uh, becomes the most important factor because that's the end that we begin with in mind, right? So if you're a Stephen Covey fan, begin with the end in mind. That is the end in mind. Make health better. Improve quality of life. Improve the experience of what it means to live, work, learn, play, all that good stuff in society. So then from there, of course, we back it down and we say, all right, so how do we actually do that? And the how is to understand that there's complex dynamics at play because we're talking about people. Uh, we're not talking about machines. And so although uh, it would be great if we could just sort of make everything about machines and, and, and mechanical. And, and kind of industrial age, that would be awesome because in that case you could just go in, fix a broken part, uh, you know, put it back and, and, and make it roll and everything would be fine again. There would be no problem with that. Of course, we know that's not the case and, and we're seeing if the, the failure of what, um, of what that mentality has brought us. The idea that we can just, in isolation, pick broken things, fix them, put the, the person back on the line of life and, and away they go, um, that just doesn't work and it hasn't worked. And, and we see that because we see the adaptive nature of complex systems, that when we do that, uh, we fix one problem, we create three other problems. And so that gets us into sort of that next step, which is, all right, well, if we can't just kind of mechanically go after this industrial age type of an approach, um, we've got to find ways to kind of deal with the complexity of the situation. Then we have to start thinking a, a little bit more interconnected in what we do. Both as professionals, we can't sort of think that we're going to do everything um, uh, and we need other people with other skill sets, but also as a system as a whole, um, which in a sense gets us again a little bit back to our roots of dealing with people as people, not dealing with people as parts. And so that kind of gets us to our next piece, which is this phenomenological nature of things, that we, we're seeing things as, as phenomenon happening, that, that we're not just sort of reductionists, we're not going to just find the little itty-bitty detail and try to lock into that, even though that's much of what science um, tends to do and tries to do, is to sort of prove out the detail for good reason. Um, but, uh, but if we, we leave it at that and we start chasing the details, we tend to miss um, the phenomenon overall. And so then that gets us into, all right, so now we have to deal with these complex phenomena. So I want to use one as an example. Um, and, and the one that I want to use 
um, is, uh, is diabetes, because I think it's one that we all can understand and relate to. It's one that we see in our lives, whether it be in our patients um, or whether it be in ourselves or our family members or friends. And, and we have to understand that that is, um, you know, sort of a, a disease state that is the oncoming tidal wave, right? I, I've often referred to it as that. It's this metabolic tidal wave that is just absolutely engulfing um, our world. And so for, forever, we've sort of thought of this as a sugar disease, right? Like, okay, so someone who is, you know, ingesting too much sugar or can't handle sugar in their diet. Um, and, and so we've on previous episodes really tried to point and, and paint the picture that this is a healing disorder, right? That, 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 that as far as a phenomenon goes, um, it's, it's a disorder with impaired healing, the inability to sort of bounce back the next day. We, we can't sort of bounce back, um, and so we tend to break down faster. And when we do, there's not a lot there to heal with. Um, but what's interesting is that when we look at even, you know, sort of the bigger picture of this disease, um, we can get back to our roots of saying, look, this is a reversible condition. Um, this is not a condition that we have to put someone on medication their whole life. Um, you know, we see there are cases, case studies of people who have reversed this through lifestyle, who have literally turned the disease off. And whether you want to call that a cure or whether you want to call that reversal, like whatever. But, but you can see cases of people who have literally turned it around, have reversed it. Um, and so I want to point to a, a study that recently came out from some folks, uh, I, I believe, at Rutgers University. And what they talked about was very simply this. They went back and said, look, we see, we've seen this phenomenon. We've seen the fact that uh, things like fiber consumption are having this effect. Um, so let's study it, right? So now we're going sort of from high to low. We've seen a phenomenon. We know we have a problem out there. We're going to try to dial it down to understand what's driving that phenomenon. But we're not going to just sort of like lock into one little thing. And so the phenomenon that they tested was fiber consumption. They decided to increase the fiber load um, in, in, a, in, a, in a population and see what happened to their diabetes. So they took the disease, they gave a bunch of uh, uh, increased fiber, and they basically were able to boil it down to, I think, 15 different strains of, of fiber, um, all of which changed the gut microbiota, so the complex system in our intestines. And once that happened, the body started to heal itself and recover uh, because it could. Right. And, and so sugar, um, you know, problems sort of went away or at least fell dramatically. People's blood lipids improved and uh, and, and people's weight uh, began to came off, gum off. So, so what, what do we see there? We see that someone said, well, we didn't say the end result was the problem, the diabetes. And let's control that, you know, that that pancreas issue. They said there's something going on here, something track it back with the body. There's a phenomenon. Let's test that and then we can go forward. So, so in a sense, that is now something that we can say, great, how do we now take that back? We've zoomed out, saw the problem, zoomed in, found uh, you know something that allows us to do something about it um, in a very practical, simple way that doesn't necessarily mean put a person on medication for the rest of their life um, or amputate things. Um, now let's zoom back out and apply it, right? And so this is the part that I feel like that gets lost. That's the part that we have to pause for a second. Like, let's apply it. Are, like, are we ready to? Are we all going to? Is someone going to actually take that and, and run with it? Or are we just going to go, wow, that's really interesting, and move on to the next thing? And so that, I think, is the question for all of us. Because we're in the situation where we can be those foot soldiers. We can be the people who apply it. Like, how hard would that really be? How hard would it be to, to have the conversation with someone and say, listen, there is enough evidence here that, that I, I really feel like I have to have this conversation with you. I notice in your past medical history that, that, you, that you're struggling with this. Um, and I know you're not necessarily here for this. Like, I get it. But, but I, if I'm really doing my professional duty, I've got to at least talk to you about this because it's going to change the rate of healing um, in here with me. It's also going to have a, a much bigger impact potentially on your future trajectory. Okay, now we're talking about beginning to think like a health manager. Now we're talking about really beginning to change things. Now, if we can do that and we can inspire that, that person to talk within their support groups, within their networks, right? Within their version of supporting women's advancement and growth, right? Within, within their cliques. Like, that's really important because now they can take that message and say, hey, there's hope. And that message can propagate. Now, maybe they call you back and say, hey, can you please explain what you explained to me to these five or ten other people? Great. Now the thing begins to actually happen. Now we're actually managing groups. We're, we're beginning to take the message where the message needs to go. All of that because we were armed with just a little bit of information. We could make it simple enough to make it interesting, begin to have the conversation in a very um, you know, health-facing way, not, in, not trying to sell something, just simply, you know, hey, did you know about this? I feel like you should know. 
And then from there, we can begin to bring it into other circles. To me, that, that's a simple population health process. Overall, see a problem at the population, get into the, the weeds a little bit and understand what's going on, understand the intricacies, see what happens, the connectedness, Pre understand that we're not going to do this in isolation. It's not just one simple thing. It's a phenomenon overall that might be driven by a few things. So understand the drivers, then take those drivers to the people who need it, and then begin to infiltrate the populations who need it with the message about those drivers. If we do that, I mean, if, if we can kind of just follow that same basic framework, that is applied prevention and health promotion. I mean, in a nutshell, that, that's, that's what it is. It's the idea of understanding we can make a difference, getting where that problem is needed badly, doing so in a way that that particular group that needs it so badly can deal with it. Maybe that's make it low enough cost. Maybe that's make it accessible enough. Maybe that's you know, put it in a language that people can understand. Maybe that's show it through demonstration, like, like whatever. But then once we can boil it down from there, we can then begin to expand it. And it doesn't take many. Right? We'll take one person or two people in a group. If you've got a group of 10 people, you know, uh, you got a Facebook feed of uh, you know, some, some private group that someone's on, some kind of a support group, fantastic. Because if you can begin to have that conversation, you can begin to build hope. And hope propagates faster than anything. Faster than anything. So if we can take that and sort of begin to propagate that in the message where people need it, then they can begin to experiment and trial. And then they can go through all those stages of change that we know will happen. Okay? They can start to have that decisional balance. They can start to say, hey, there's enough pros to do this. Like, that's not that hard. Maybe I'll throw a green smoothie in the mix today. Like, whatever, something simple. And then from there, they can begin to, to bring it forward. So, so that ultimately is the recap. And, and you know what? In my two minutes and 43 seconds left, um, I think I'm just going to leave it there. That's, that's what I want us to understand. That's what I want to bring full circle. And I hope this episode this morning does that a little bit. Because the science is there. The science on d disease reversal and some of the most um, you know, pervasive diseases that we see today, like it's there. I mean, cardiovascular disease, number one killer in the world, it's there. We know it can be prevented. We know it can be reversed. Like We don't need any more data to say that it can work. What we need are people who are on the ground applying this stuff. What we need is people who can help others take it into their lives. Okay? We need the applied prevention people, not the theoretical prevention people. And, and I'm happy to say, I mean, I'm proud to say, honestly, that, that that is happening. Those numbers are growing. You know, last night we wrapped up kind of the fifth of six units with, with our current cohort. And, and you can sort of see the connections. It's awesome to watch. People are getting it. They're starting to see the nuance in this. That it's not just simply let me bust down the doors and bring you a program, okay? That, it, that it's much more nuanced than that. That it's you have a goal. Your goal, whether that be a business, a community, um, you know, a person, a family, is to achieve at some level, whatever that means to you. And our message can help. Like we can help you toward your end goal. And in so doing, you can live a better quality of life. Now, if that is not worth working for, if that's not meaningful enough work, um, then I would tell you you're in the wrong profession. But if you are in the right spot and you know that resonates with you, like that that's what wakes you up in the morning, that you can go and help other people live a better version of themselves, then it's time to, to get into the application of it. And I would just say uh, that's, that's where we're at. It's exciting. It's been an exciting couple of months. If you've been following on Twitter or on Facebook or anything, um, you know, th there's a lot of excitement that's been going on, and, and, and I feel blessed to be a part of it um, and, and maybe even um, you know, get a tip of the cap uh, this go around. But but, but this is my tip of the recap because uh, you know, more and more people are getting in this space and, and for good reason. So it's only Monday. It's going to be a busy week. You know it will be. It is every week. Uh, it's going to be a busy week. Hit it hard. I mean, make some change. Uh, we absolutely can do this. The science is there. Uh, it just takes the courage to get out there and bring it to the people who need it the most. It's only Monday. It's a great Monday. It's Monday with pop. Make it count.